Hi, my name is Francois Nodia and I am a super teacher. Learning content on its own is hard enough. But in many cases, learners have challenges that prevent them from learning optimally. In a system that expects learners to perform at their very best just so that they can gain entry into tertiary education, we need teachers who can teach in diverse scenarios so that they can reach every single learner. This is much easier said than done. Teachers are of course trained to identify barriers to learning, but we often miss them because we are so preoccupied with all the other challenges of teaching, including the high administrative load. In this episode, we discuss the various types of barriers and we also talk about how teachers can approach these barriers to optimize their teaching. But before we jump into the episode, our friends over at the Eduvation Network have again decided to sponsor an episode on this channel. So in keeping with the tradition of their sponsored episodes, we will be doing a giveaway during this episode. Be sure to go check out their website at www.eduvationnet.co.za forward slash super teacher. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Eduvation Network, they have an online platform where you can participate in SACE accredited online courses from the comfort of your own home. You do not need to attend another workshop on a Saturday or an afternoon after school or even your holidays. You can merely log on to their online platform and complete your courses in the comfort of your own home. And to get you started, they are running a promotion where you can sign up for one of their courses and get 5% off if you use the promo code SUPERTEACHER. But if you would like to get the entire school staff to enroll into a course, you could get 15% off if you use the promo code SUPERSCHOOL. But now to the exciting part the giveaway. As part of the competition for this episode, you can win a six month subscription to their platform to the value of 25 CPTD points. They are also giving away a grand prize where you could win an HP Slate 7 tablet and you could also win a 500 Rand gift voucher for the Super Teacher Solutions online store. For this episode's competition, we have simplified the entry conditions. All you need to do to enter into this competition is go to www.eduvationnet.co.za forward slash super teacher. On this landing page, you will see an entry form that you can complete for you to enter into this competition. As simple as that. While you are browsing on their website, be sure to go check out one of their content providers called Shaping the Learner. They have got a course titled Identify and Respond to Learners with Special Needs and Barriers to Learning. And that brings us to the question of the week. Which barriers to learning do you deal with on a regular basis? Be sure to tell us in the comment section down below. With all of that being said, let's educate. There is a range of barriers to learning and you probably encounter many of them daily in your classroom. In South Africa, we have got inclusive classrooms where learners with varying abilities and from diverse backgrounds have to share the same resources. Resources like one teacher to 40 or 50 or 60 learners, the same resources in the sense of textbooks, and they also have to share the same curriculum material or other resources that you have in your classroom. It is one of our priorities as teachers to assist all of the learners in our classroom, even if they have barriers to learning. One of the biggest traps that many teachers fall for is to label children with barriers to learning and then trying a one-size-fits-all solution to all learners with the same label. It is important to take note that children with special needs in education is not the same as children with barriers to learning. Of course, the two are related, but barriers to learning basically means anything that prevents a child from learning optimally. One of these categories is that of special needs education or of learning difficulties. 
So what I thought we'd do is make mention of the different types of learning barriers. One of the biggest barriers to learning in our country comes from a socioeconomic background. In many cases, learners come from a poor household. So you struggle with issues like hunger in the classroom. How can you expect a learner to pay attention and concentrate when a basic need like being fed is not met? Some of the other examples of socioeconomic barriers could be the distance that learners need to travel from their homes to the school. We've heard horror stories of learners that need to swim through crocodile infested lakes just to get to their schools. And they do it every single day. So just imagine being hungry and being tired in a classroom is not exactly optimal for learning. Another type of barrier is poor educational environment. This includes things like infrastructure, classrooms that don't even have a roof, or in some cases there's no building at all and children learn under trees. There are other systemic issues like the poor quality of the teachers that the school employs, but unfortunately that's the only adults that they could get to teach the learners. And then of course other infrastructure related issues like space available and also the temperature of the classroom. One of the biggest barriers to learning comes from the domestic environment that the child lives in. There are so many cases of broken homes and of child abuse that occurs and domestic violence that this, of course, will have an influence on how children learn. And then the last barrier to learning that I'd like to make mention of is innate barriers to learning. These could be the barriers that are genetic or medical in nature. It is important here to distinguish between learning difficulties or challenges in learning and then learning disabilities. Learning disabilities are those conditions that are often medically diagnosed. This would include examples like dyslexia, dyscalculia, and even ADHD. It is important to take note that learners with special needs in education is only one aspect of learning barriers and that we need to make this distinction very clearly. From these examples, you can clearly see that there is a vast range of learning barriers and now the teacher's role in alleviating these barriers is very important. We are basically the people that can bridge those barriers. We are the ones that have to attempt to create a learning environment where learners with various learning difficulties or with barriers to learning can thrive in your classroom. So what I thought we'd do for the final part of this episode is share some tips on how teachers can deal with these barriers to learning. Tip number one, don't diagnose. Remember, we are teachers, we are not psychologists. It is part of our training to identify these barriers to learning. Unfortunately, many teachers make the mistake of diagnosing on behalf of the medical professionals. Remember that we are not trained in the nuances of these learning barriers. It is important to work in conjunction with the school-based support team and with educational psychologists. Remember that we identify the possible barrier, but we then refer the case to the school-based support team or to the educational psychologist. It is important that there's a good relationship between the teaching staff and the support staff. Tip number two, be aware of all the barriers to learning present in your classroom. Before you decide to design a lesson, take cognizance of the different learners in your classroom. Know what every single one of their barriers to learning are so that you can adapt your lesson. Design your lesson with every child in mind. Now, I know this is extremely difficult, but I mean, that's what makes teaching an art. Taking content and then crafting it for those individuals in the classroom. See it as a challenge and grab it with both hands. Tip number three, build a relationship with the parents. Do not try and deal with this matter in isolation. It is extremely important that you build a relationship with the parents and regularly meet with them so that you can discuss the strategy going forward. 
By building a relationship with the parents, you also get to know what happens at home. And you can use all of this information when you design your lessons and when you interact with these learners. Tip number four, don't label. We often fall for the trap to label a child by one of their distinguishing features. We would often tell other teachers, you know, that dyslexic child I have in my classroom. This is detrimental. You are building up a prejudice against that learner. Remember, a learner that is dyslexic isn't just dyslexic. That learner is still a person who happens to have dyslexia. Tip number five, trust your own intuition. Teachers have this sixth sense in knowing that something is wrong with a specific learner. Trust that intuition, but don't deal with it on your own. As I said previously, make use of the support staff in your school. And there you have it. We have only scratched the surface of a loaded topic. If you'd like to learn more about barriers to learning and you'd like to upskill yourself in this department, be sure to check out Shaping the Learners course on identifying and responding to learners with special needs and barriers to education. But before we sign off, I would like to explain once again how you could win with the Eduvation Network. If you'd like to win the six month subscription to the value of 25 CPTD points, be sure to go to www.eduvationnet.co.za forward slash super teacher. There you will see the entry form to enter into this episode's competition. The Eduvation Network is sponsoring four episodes on this channel. You would need to answer the question of the week to all four of these questions. For ease of access, I will link a playlist up here so that you can look at all of the videos we've done so far. You would of course need to subscribe to this YouTube channel and also sign up to the Eduvation Network's online platform. And then lastly, you would need to like the Facebook pages of the Eduvation Network and of Super Teacher Solutions. To make it easier for you, I'm going to link to all of these requirements in the description section of this video. And that's it. If you enjoy what we do here, be sure to give this episode a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel if you would like to see all Super Teachers unite under one banner so that we can make a positive difference in each and every classroom. If you haven't subscribed yet, there's a logo right here that you can click on and that will take you to the subscription page. If you'd like to watch more videos on this YouTube channel, be sure to click on the episode right there. That will take you to an episode that suits your liking and the one below it for the latest episode on this YouTube channel. And that's it. Until next time, I'm Francois Nodier and I am a super teacher.